In the last video, we created a database in phpMyAdmin, and then we created a table to store the user information. In this video, we will connect to the database and start creating the functionality to add their users to the table. And we are going to use an HTML form along with PHP to do that. Now I've already created the form, so let's take a look at the code. This is a CSS. You can style the form any way you want. These files, both the HTML and the CSS, are in the exercise files. So let's go to the HTML. To connect to the database, we're going to create a PHP tag. To create the PHP tag, it's a less than sign question mark PHP. The closing tag is the question mark and the greater than sign. Anything that goes inside of these two tags is PHP. Inside of these PHP tags, we're going to connect to the database. So let's create a variable. To create a variable with PHP, we use the dollar sign and then name the variable. So let's create a variable called connection and set it equal to a function. This is a built-in PHP function called MySQLI underscore connect. It takes four parameters, the DB host, DB user, the DB pass, and the DB name. So now let's define those variables. First of all, let's set the DB host, set it equal to localhost. Next is the DB user, let's call it admin. The DB pass, let's leave it blank for right now. And the DB name, that's the name of our database. Do you remember what that is? It's D3 underscore projects, right? Now, let's go back to phpMyAdmin and create this new user and assign it to a password. With the home tag selected, let's go to user accounts and down here, let's click add new user. The username is going to be admin. The host is going to be local. Now let's generate a password. I'm going to copy this. Go up here and paste it. And paste it here. And then back in the code, I'm going to paste it right here under the DB pass. Okay, so let's go back to phpMyAdmin. Okay, so let's check all for set all privileges. Go down here and save it. Let's click go. So now we need to check for errors. So let me leave a comment here. So what we're going to do is call this other built-in function. But first, let's do an if statement. If mysqli underscore connect underscore error no, this is a built-in PHP function. It will return an error if there is any. It will return the last error of our connection. So inside curly braces, let's call this other function. It's called die. That will just end the script and set give us some kind of a message. Let's call it connection failed. Now we hope we don't see this, but if we do, we can fix it. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and go to the form and check it out. We refresh and we do have an error. So let's look. Unknown database, D3 underscore projects. There's our error. So let's go look. Here's our error. Well, we need to take out that S because it's D3 project. So let's try this again. And now we're good. We've made our connection. Okay, so now that we've connected to the database, let's go down here closer to the form and create another PHP block right above the form. We're going to move this later. But for right now, opening and closing PHP tags. And inside the PHP tags, we're going to add some more PHP. So 
Let's say, let's create a if statement. If is set, this is a function, another PHP function built in function. Now the parameter is dollar sign underscore post. And inside of brackets and inside of quotation marks, we will insert the name of the submit button, add user submit. So I'm going to copy that, go back up here and just paste it right in. So if this is set, in other words, if we click this button inside curly braces is where we're going to, let's declare some more variables with the dollar sign. We'll say username and it's going to be equal to MySQLI underscore real underscore escape underscore string. We need the connection. Remember when we made the connection up above? That connects to the database. We also need to say post username. So let's talk about this for a minute. When we click the input with the name of add user submit, we get the value of the input with the name username and store it in this variable called username. Because the method of our form was post, we use the super global variable post. So we're going to get the values from all of our other inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole line right here. And then I'll paste it and I'll change this to email. That's going to be the value of the name of our input email when we click the button. Again, I'm going to copy. We need one for the password. I'll change that to password. And then this one to password. So we are getting the values of our HTML inputs and storing them inside PHP variables. So now let's create another variable. Let's call it dollar sign insert underscore user underscore Q. The Q, I use the Q because this is a query. Now inside quotation marks, this is SQL, Structured Query Language. We're going to insert into the table we made called users and the value, we're going to put the values inside these quotation, inside the parentheses. The, inside the parentheses for the users, we're going to add the fields that we created when we created the database, the table. That was username, email, and password. And this value should not be that color, it should be red. So let's fix that. Okay, so inside the parentheses for the values, we're going to add our variables. Now these variables need to go inside of quotation marks. So we got the username, email, don't forget the dollar sign. And they need to be separated by commas. Okay, so now we need to call another function. We need the semicolon there. So this other function that we're going to call is MySQLI underscore query. And that takes the connection and the query or the string that we created, the SQL string in variables. So let's copy that, paste it right here. Okay, so now let's save and find out if it's going to work. So I'm going to add my name as a username and my email. I have to add the at sign and the dot com because I created some client side validation. I'm going to put password, whatever password, click submit. So let's go to PHP my admin and see if this works. Let's refresh. And there it is. There's a record in the database. Let's try that again. My name, same name, same email address, and then password. So let's go take a look. I'm going to refresh. And now we have another record in the database. It's got the same username and the same email address, and that could be a problem. 
So in the next video, we're going to go back to the code and create some kind of validation, server-side validation, in order to prevent duplicate usernames and duplicate emails. We're also going to create some validation for this password so that, first of all, we have to encrypt the password because we never want to use plain text in our password field. Then we're going to create some validation to make sure that the password is a certain length and it has certain characters with it. So anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.